now, right? As a kid, you had to go to church every Sunday. You had to be in the building. You had to sit there. And if there was a, a, a baptism, you was going to be there all day. Now, a lot of people turn it on Sunday morning and it's, it's a lot easier. So what are your thoughts on people not actually attending the institution of church? Um, first of all, you're not about to tie trip in me. <laughs> <laughs> No, you don't. No, you don't. Let's be very clear. Um, let me see. I, I mean, I think that the world is changing. And as the world changes, I think people are finding things that are more convenient for them. Mm -hmm. And I do think that you are able to have intimate encounters with God from this comfort of your own home. And I think mm -hmm. it's powerful that that's the way that things are being spread. I think it's like watching a football game on ho at home. Like you can get hype, you can be excited for your team, but there is something about being in the room that's with right. other yes. people mm -hmm. that makes you just take things over the edge. I was surprised that in a world where people aren't coming to church, that we have 40,000 women at the Woman Evolve Conference because I'm like I don't know that this is a thing that people are going to really be into when they like virtual experiences but there is something that happens in healthy community and connection that allows your faith to really be strengthened. I've had people come into rooms and like they didn't really want to be there. Somebody drugged them in there. They were going through a depression. They don't even know why they were there but just being in the space, sitting next to someone who was able to care for them and just being surrounded by worship lifted their spirits when they couldn't lift their own hands and I don't think that there's any substance Substitute for that. Mm. Mm. So, um, just talking about how your spirit is affected by your environment. So, we've been talking about music's impact and what's happening with all the beefs and all this this twenty twenty four stuff. Are we losing something by the fact that after the pandemic, a lot of us did not return to a physical church? We started watching it online. I know. My family, we watched church for for a very long time before we started going back, um, and I, I I know a lot of people who have been doing this as well. Are mm -hmm. we substituting this virtual experience for really coming together and living life mm -hmm. in person with people? Is that hurting the church? And in in turn, as the church goes down, the world goes down. Mm -hmm. I think we've been uh, ushering into that in every aspect of life. I think separation, isolation, um, I think this in any aspect of life is unity, is power. Even with the Tower of Babel, he said, let me go down here and stop them because when they come together, there's nothing they can't do. You know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. it's a certain power that comes when people actually come together and unify. You'll see the young kids, like, we'll be in the same house. And instead of saying, like, when I was little, they're like, hey, come down here and get this remote. Now it's like, We'll shoot each other a text message and we're in the same house. Um, it's like yeah. everything is becoming just so more Im impersonal. Everybody's going into their own island. Because it's strength in numbers. It's unity. It's fellowship. It's love. I've seen people be going through a depression and be down and just come to the fellowship. It might not even be the word that blessed them. Somebody just came and gave them a hug. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And everything just came out of them and just broke them down. They just felt the love in that moment that they needed to feel. <clears throat> Because of what they were going through So I, I don't knock church online Because it has a purpose If you yeah. can't make service You're not evil Because you're watching it online You're not separatist or whatnot But nothing compares To just that in-person uh, community mm -hmm. And a healthy fellowship Where you experience that love in person I think it's always better Yeah, I was going to say I feel like you're kind of Talking about two different things Because um, watching church online And community Having community Are two different things um, I definitely feel like there's a difference when you are in the building versus watching church online. But like you said, Sean, I know it took us a minute mm -hmm. to um, start physically going back to church uh, for a variety of reasons. Yeah. And so, um, but there is a difference when you're in that space physically. I feel like the worship is richer. I know for me personally, I find myself sitting in the, sitting down or laying in the bed or whatever, listening instead of like act, actually engaging God during worship in particular. Um, but then I will say too, on the community aspect, I do believe that there, um, I mean, to your point, Plan James, there's no, there's nothing like just having a genuine hug from people. Mm -hmm. um, but I do believe you can experience community outside of, and actually you should experience community outside of the four walls of the church because so many people, especially in these larger churches, um, they get lost because they're not engaging in community. And when I say in community, I'm talking about in smaller groups where people know you, you know people, you know, yeah. they, you're opening your life, you're sharing life, you're doing life with people. Um, outside of the four walls. So I think there's definitely a difference there. Um, so I wouldn't put them in the same category, but community is definitely needed, like yeah. just in the church, period. And that honestly is needed whether you physically go into the building or not. Facts. Yeah. Uh, you, you about to say something? Nah, I, oh. 
Uh, I'm gonna say um, I don't see a few people in the chat that's like kind of like I love Jesus, but the church thing. Uh, just give church another chance. Try to give church another chance again. Find a church. If I, I, I remember hearing somebody saying this recently. You go back to fast food places. You may got sick at a fast food place. You didn't stop going to fast. Try to find another church. Give church a try. And the reason why we're saying that is because Satan is picking people off while you by yourself. Like mm-hmm. you by yourself, you you may not have a small group, or you are with people and y'all not strong accountability. You you, you let people just do whatever. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, man. You may tell your boy, hey man, I'm dealing with this. Me too. Yeah, you know, and it's it. But if you in a strong Believing church, no church is perfect. You know, every ch- and, and get out your mind that church is trying to get your money. Yeah. Some churches don't want your money, but yeah. churches in the, in in the end, I will say this. But some churches may need money to get stuff done in their building. Mm-hmm. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So I'll, I'll say this to anybody: find a church, try it just another time. Just try it. We're not your church. We say that all the time. Track Stars is a a get together of People who get together, talk about the culture, love on, um, love on you, want to encourage you, and want to see the best for you. But we're not your church. And Ruslan is not your church. Nick Jones is not your church. None of these people on YouTube is your church. Try to find a church in your local community to go to first and just try it again. I know the pastor at your last church was wilding. Somebody, we something know. happened at mm-hmm. Try it again. I'm telling you. And the reason I'm saying that is because I don't want to see you alone. And I don't think none of us want to hear you be a casualty of the enemy because you are stubborn and you don't think they're out between your money. Like, no, just find a church. You can. It's a plethora of churches in your local community or 20 minutes away from you or whatever. So just try it again. That's all. That's my prayer. I don't know a lot of people in the comment comments. I'm just going through the comments yeah, saying that. I do. I do think um, the reason we keep saying that is because I know a lot of you guys use this as like your fellowship, and we try our best to make it that. The only yeah. difference is is that we don't know you, and we can't call out anything that we see is wrong. The yeah. people in your church could say, Jeremiah, wh- why are you doing that? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Why are you doing this? Yeah. I heard you know it's like somebody you know is, is cheating on their wife or they're 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 not coming to church as much they could tell like yeah. there's there's yeah. something yeah. missing yeah and you know yeah. we will do our best to because it's kind of a one-way church right but you know we'll do our best to maybe we need to go and do this thing in several areas but ultimately without a local church for you to go to where people know you they could feel you, they could see your face they could tell when your spirit is not right it's not you're not fully doing it so um yeah that's that's a yeah. good and, point, and, and i would say like for us when we was in between stuff we were, of course, online. Sometimes we still do online, but we go on like um, Saturday, Saturday, Saturday um, afternoon at our church. But um, we was going through the process, and then what happened with us was we ended up getting into a small group from our church, yeah. which helped us a lot. And then from there, our small group kind of morphed. Now, where we are, small group leaders, and then but oh, cool. we got back to church because we was like, we just got to go to church. Yeah, but I was gonna say. The the dope thing about the small group thing was, and that's why I was kind of honing in on the community pieces, that was in the middle of the pandemic, like 20, 2021, where we were like, we had been sitting, like literally sitting in church um, for three years. And there's a whole other story behind that. But like going to church, but like literally just sitting and God was like, okay, it's time to take the next step. And when I say we've, it's, it's been a journey for us. It's been a journey yeah. for us mm-hmm. because we literally went from a hundred to zero, not zero to a hundred, a hundred to zero, mm-hmm. where we had to like break all the way down and allow God to build us back up the way he wanted to build us back mm-hmm. up. So, but we found incredible community through an online small group in the middle of the pandemic. And I mean, like we were meeting online, but it was still in that smaller circle with people from across the country. And I mean, we would get together maybe like every other month or whatever, but we still had that consistent getting together, coming together in each other's Mm -hmm. lives where we knew we were being covered. We knew we were being held accountable. And I don't, I don't endorse online small groups for everybody. You know, everybody has their own situation mm-hmm. or whatever. What I'm saying is community is possible, whether it's online or in person. You just need to make sure that you're open to being in environments where mm-hmm. people know you, 
and you know them and you're willing to open up your life to them. Yeah, I, I, I was reading a book by Charles Stanley called Perfect Peace. And he talked about a story of a man who went 50 years without being in the church because of church hurt. Mm-hmm. And, you know, he's an older man now when he returns to the church. But it was like he was so distraught that he let somebody separate him from the love of God mm-hmm. for 50 years. And, you know, they said that he was the neighborhood guy that was always like, you know, bashing church in the in the stores and stuff like that. And then when they started seeing him in church, when he got back to church, you know, 50 years later, they said he was like the most like evolved person, you know, in the church that he was the in the parking lot ministry. He was greeting people at the door and he was just really, really sad about how he let 50 years you know, of being separated from God in, interrupt his life with God. So I think if you do, if you are experiencing church hurt, if you've experienced that before, just know that when you turn that corner, there may be other arms waiting to embrace you and, you know, open that up for you. Um, so I, I definitely think that going back to church is a great thing. I hear people say all the time, I don't go to church. I just, you know, read my Bible and listen to stuff online. And I personally think that that's just a separation from God. It's a, and withering, just, it's a yeah. withering vine. It's a, it's, it's a branch laying on the ground. Yeah. Like yeah. You, you'll be alive for a little bit, but yeah. you're, not, you're not connected to the source. We're, we're designed as a body, like literally a body. We're supposed to be connected to each other. Each function is supposed to help the other function. If you're by yourself, you may be doing well for a little while, but you'll fizzle out. Yeah. I, I was going to ask y'all, and what? I'm sorry, that cut you off playing yeah, no, you could, you I was just going to say real quick, I don't know if y'all do these anymore, but is it like top fives? But y'all might need to do like a top five signs of a healthy church because mm-hmm. so I think you know where people, to avoid. exactly yeah. because not even what to avoid, but yeah, but like, like accountability is a sign of health. Like, I don't want you to feel like just because it may have been abused in the past or whatever, like, but like really being open because like what you were saying, so many people have fallen away if it's because the church hurt or the pandemic or whatever, but like, like, to know what to look for and to know what to allow um, themselves to embrace, you know. I was going to say, too, like, the church hurt thing is a real thing, but mm-hmm. <clears throat> you also have to remain humble. Anything you're doing, remain humble, remain open, remain teachable. And I think we have a lot of people now, like you said, are looking online. They're coming across certain information. And, like, true indeed, there's a lot of churches out here who are not really preaching like a I would say like a global crisis more so like based off our Western culture, like the things we learned that we've been Americanized Christ to us Mm -hmm. when actually truth is something I can go anywhere in the world, no matter where the condition is, where I'm at, that truth will remain constant. And sometimes we don't get that in our churches, but that doesn't mean that you should just abandon hope on all churches as if there's no churches out here who are giving you um, a, a, a correct biblical perspective. And that's when pride and arrogance and you begin to start feeling like you're the only one who has the right understanding of how the Bible is interpreted. Like, don't fall into that trap. And hurt will do that. Hurt will cause you to isolate yourself. Nobody understands. Nobody knows what I'm going through. Oh, y'all over here doing this, doing that. I've seen people start out going through prosperity gospel where they were like, we the head and not the tail. We above and not beneath and this and that, which is true in scripture, but they were out of context with it. Then I've seen them go from that to a street kind of uh, ministry where like we out here outside the four walls y'all still in the four walls when both of us need each other mm-hmm. then I seen them go from that <laughs> to going to now I'm reformed to where I have all the knowledge like we know more than everybody else y'all don't know the Bible for real did this and that and then they went to a church where they felt like it was a quote unquote black church that had the knowledge and truth of our identity and stuff and then they turned out to be a Hebrew Israelite so it's like but all the theme for all of those were I want to be superior mm-hmm. Yeah, I want to be in a position where I'm on top. I want to be yeah. seen as I'm the leader. I'm the head of what's going on. Where right. All of us should be submitted upon the Christ. There's so, that theme again. Yep. So mm. don't get too high on a high horse and think you have an understanding that everybody else don't have. It, so I'm going to isolate myself because your understanding is beneath mine. Because that's the trick of the enemy. And he going to pick you up? Okay. So um, that's, that's really good. Um, if you're new here, I see a lot of new faces in here. Make sure you subscribe, like the video and all that. We want to see you again. We do this every Saturday noon to 2 Eastern Standard Time. Join us on Patreon, patreon.com forward slash track stars universe if you want even more content. But welcome. We see people that I've never seen their face in here uh, talking. So yeah, welcome, welcome. Um, if you're here for the Kendrick and Drake conversation, I have one more question about that at the end of the show. So stick to, stay tuned. We've got to do the poll results. Oh, yeah. Let's, let's do that. I, I can't see them all. That's the only problem. I wish there was um, a... I wish there was a way just to see the polls. I got, I got um, did the pan did the pandemic 
have an um, a, sign a significant impact on churchgoers. 74% um, said yes, and it still does. 13% uh, said yes, but it's back to normal. It only changed how people engage with 6% and not really was 4%. 43 votes. 